Welcome to the PhoneArena.com video review of the Sanyo Pro 700. The Pro 700 is one of the two Pro Series phones that Sanyo is providing for Sprint's QChat launch. For the first time, CDMA users will be able to use Nextel Direct Connect on all CDMA devices. Last year, Sprint launched hybrid devices, which they call PowerSource, which use IDEN for push to talk and CDMA for voice and data. With the launch of QChat, the hybrid devices will be going away, and for the first time, IDEN and CDMA push to talk users can talk to each other. With its military specifications, the Pro 700 will fit right in with the current IDEN lineup. However, it's very unique in its design and is narrower than any other IDEN phone that we've seen. This leads to a great in hand feel. The phone is a bit thick, about 20 millimeters, but it's very narrow which gives it a great feel when you're holding it. It's also a good weight, and we really think Sanyo has done a great job with the quality of the device. As you can see, the front has milled aluminum. It also has four rivets that are holding it on. However, we're not quite sure if those are real or not. The display, as you can see, is nice and readable. You can put this in direct sunlight and have no problems reading it whatsoever, which is a very important thing for a work phone. Down at the bottom you see the large speaker for the speakerphone. At the top here is actually the microphone when used with the speakerphone. And down at the bottom is the standard microphone for voice calls. On the left side of the phone is the volume rocker, the Nextel Direct Connect button, and here we'll have the covered micro USB charging and data port. We like to see Sanyo adapting the standard early. We've seen it on a few past phones, and it looks like they'll be using it from here on out. On the right side of the phone, you have a covered 2.5 millimeter headphone jack. There we go. This button right here toggles the speakerphone, and this button with the stop logo on it indicates that it's inside end key. The back of the phone is very simple. You'll find the Nextel Direct Connect sticker, which actually points to the Direct Connect button. We find it odd that this is a sticker as opposed to actually printed on the door, and it's one of the few cheap moves in an otherwise very solid phone. At the top, you can see the two recesses, and screws are in there. This left recess also doubles as a lanyard loop. Down at the bottom, we have a sliding lock to hold the back door in place. If we unlock it, the back door simply comes off and we find the battery. Nothing special back here. This is strictly a work phone. There's no camera or micro SD slots. The design of the Sanyo Pro 700 is very reassuring. The quality feel continues as you flip the flip open. As you can hear, there is no click like we used to find in Sanyo phones. While we know this was a love it or hate it option, we personally hated it and we're glad to see it's not there. On the inside you'll find a 1.9 inch QVGA display. The display is 65,000 colors and generally it looks really good. It's pretty easy to read in any lighting condition. It's not quite as deep as we've seen with some Samsung panels which are 262,000 colors and it is pretty small coming in at under 2 inches. However, Again, this is a work phone. It's not something that you're going to be watching TV on, so we can't complain much. We have kind of a unique keypad here. The five-way directional pad and 12-key keypad is pretty normal, but around that we have a plethora of buttons. As you can see, there are hard-coded text, web, speaker, and back buttons, in addition to the standard left and right soft keys and the send and end button. In addition to the hard-coded keys, the directional pad can be customized as well. On top of that, the favorites menu, which is the left soft key, offers 12 more customizable options. This gives the user a total of 20 shortcut possibilities, only four of which are hard coded. We really like seeing that customization on the phone and we feel it leads to a user friendly experience. The buttons themselves are a bit smaller than we normally see and they almost sit flush. The keys do, however, give you a reassuring click as you press them, so you know that you've done that. However, users with bigger hands or bigger fingers may have small problems dialing with it. 
it's not a huge deal. And as you can see, the keys take up almost as much real estate as possible. So it's just a matter of function over design. There's not much to say about the menu system of the Pro 700. It's similar to other Sanyos on the market, most notably the LX that we reviewed about a month back. The only difference you'll find is the navigation menu as opposed to a pictures menu. Of course, this is not a camera phone, so I wouldn't have expected to see the pictures menu anyway. One odd thing about the Pro 700 and all of the 4Q chat phones launching on the 15th is that they do not support Sprint TV or the Sprint Music Store. This makes them the first EVDO phones to not have these options. We understand there will be more high-end phones later, one by Samsung and another by Motorola, which will offer more features such as the multimedia suite. However, it's kind of a curious admission. Since the hardware is there, you'd think Sprint would take advantage of it. Our only complaint about Sanyo's menu system is the settings menu. As you'll see here, there are actually 32 subfolders, excuse me, 22 subfolders, which is entirely too many. A lot of these can be consolidated into one item, moved elsewhere, or flat gotten rid of. Overall, the menu system is pretty logical though. There's a lot of customization options which we really like. For instance, we can view in either grid or list, and we can change the background if we chose as well. Let's switch it over to Calm Tone here, and you can see the layout looks different. Of course, the big draw to the Pro 700 is Direct Connect. First and foremost, that's what this phone is. You can see we have the Pro 200 sitting in the background here, and we'll go ahead and demo QChat, Direct Connect. All we have to do is hit the button on the side, it'll scroll through recent Direct Connect calls, and then press it again to alert them. As you can see, that was almost instantaneous. There are a few differences that we see here. First of all, you can see this little open indicator here. When we press it, it'll show me indicating that you're talking. When the other party's talking, it'll show the phone or that contact name. Another nice thing is the little LED indicator down at the bottom. Right now it's green because the airwave is open. When we're using it, it turns the red. It's not a huge deal, but some of the nice small little details that you'll see. We'll see on the Pro 200 here that we have a missed Direct Connect call. That's also a new feature for CDMA Direct Connect phones. In the past, if someone alerted you on an IDEN unit and you didn't receive the alert, you would never know. Overall, we're very impressed with the speed. Again, it's almost immediate. It's no slower than Nextel phones of past, and it, we didn't notice any differences when direct connecting a Nextel or a Sprint user. The one issue we did have, however, is that there were times when the phone could not access the network. Obviously right here we're in an area where we can use it. However, a lot of the times one of the phones will not be able to access it while the other will. The push to talk performance is outstanding, just as good as it is on the Nextel network. The issues about not being able to access the network hopefully will be addressed by the time the phones launch. But as any Nextel user knows, there are plenty of times where they can't access the network either. Still, that's not an excuse and Sprint needs to fix that whole ASAP. It should also be noted that Push to Talk only works on the EVDO Revision A network. The phone will often work without the Direct Connect working, and that's why Sprint's launching initially in 46 markets that most closely mirror EVDO Revision A and IDEN networks. You can use the phone anywhere in the country that has Revision A access, However, it will only be sold in those certain markets. Still, the Revision A network is growing all the time. It currently covers over 220 million people, and it's not much different from the IDEN network. We think IDEN users will really like the push-to-talk service over the Sprint network and the Sanyo Pro 700 in general.